Hey guys, it's Luke from Retro Revival here, and as you can see today, I am back doing another custom LEGO minifigures video. And a few months ago, maybe about six months ago, I did a Game of Thrones video, and I thought, you know what, let's do a sequel. There are so many great characters in this show, and so many great figures of the show, I couldn't keep it to one video. And here we have eight more figures. Starting at the back, we have Carl Drogo, Littlefinger, Ned and Rob Stark. Then coming down to the front, you have Samwell Tarly, Joffrey Baratheon, Brian of Tarth, and Lord Varys. I absolutely love this show, and I didn't actually start watching it until the show had finished. And as I said in the last video, the last season of this show absolutely sucks, and it completely ruins this show. But you know what, the rest of the seasons are actually pretty good. So guys, with all that out of the way, let's get into the figures. So guys, here is the first figure, and this is of course, Samwell Tarly. One of my favourite characters on the show, he's actually just really kind. And this is him in his most common outfit, which is his Night's Watch uniform. So I'm going to do what I always do and start with the top and work my way down. First of all, he's got the black Harry Potter hair mould, which fits perfectly for this character. I literally can't think of a better hair mould for them to use. Then going down to the face, this is actually a great face print. You can see his eyes, his mouth, and his beard. And this just looks exactly like him. Then going down to the rest of his body, as you can see, he's got this big black cape. This is two pieces, and this is like a furry texture, just like the Jon Snow one from the last video. It was a bit of a pain to actually put on the figure, but, you know, it looks good. Then going down to the torso, you can see his belly right there. This is mostly black. This is like a leather uniform and you can see the buckles on the one side stretching across his belly with this crease down the middle and a little crease there and you can also see his belt there really detailed with the gold buckle and just a lot of little dots all over there this then leads down to the legs but you can see the bottom of like this over jacket thing i don't know what you guys want to call this you can also see a little bit of his belt coming down there but you can also see loads of little dots where it's like been sewn together he then just has black legs with a few little lines and creases and no printing for the boots then twisting to the side, you can't really see any printing because of the big cape. But you can see this amazing, intricate sword. And this is Sam's family sword, which is called Heartsbane. And just look at all the detail on there. It is just absolutely amazing. And of course, once again, you can't see the printing on the back because of his cloak. Then the next figure is one of the most hated characters in the entire show. And this is Joffrey Baratheon. But let's be honest, he's more of a Lannister. He has got the same hair mould as Sam, but in this blonde colour which is a little bit long for him his hair is quite short in the show and also it could have done with like a little bit of ginger in there but to be fair it's not too bad then going down to his face you can definitely tell this is joffrey he's sort of got like this petulant annoying look on his face which is perfect for this character then going down to the torso you can see this grand outfit he's got on you can see just there at the neckline he's got a black shirt underneath then he's got these long flowing robes that are just covered with detail, loads of different sewn on pieces in like this gold colour, a very regal look, which fits because he is a king. He's also repping the Lannister colours with the red and gold. You can then see a black belt with a little buckle right there. And then going down to his legs, this is very interesting. I think it would have looked better if they printed on the legs, but they've actually got this weird little cloth piece here, which covers up his black legs. I can see what they were going for, it just doesn't fold down properly. But it's supposed to continue on from the top, but the colours don't really match. But it does have some printing on there. Then going on to the side of the figure, there's no printing down the sides, but you can see this crossbow that he has, and you can also see the little problem I was telling you about with the cloak sticking out. And then there's also no printing on the back of the figure. Then the next figure is Brienne of Tarth, one of my favourite characters in the entire show. She's such a badass. So let's start off with the top, and if I take my finger away, it looks like she's got no hair at all. It's just because of the lighting. Her hair is a very, very, very light blonde in this kind of like scruffy look. And this looks perfect for Brienne. Brienne or Brienne, I don't know how to say it. I think maybe a slicked back look would have looked a little bit better, but this works pretty well. Then going down to her face, I don't think this really presents Brienne in the best of ways. I just don't think it really looks like her. It's a very bland expression on her face, and you just can't really tell it's her. But then the rest of this figure is absolutely amazing. So let's go down to the torso, and this is of course covered by this huge chest plate with a lot of detail on there, with the lines. This is of course like the King's Guards kind of armor but you can kind of see what they've done with the printing on the shoulder pads and around the neckline and then the rest of it just going down with these black stripes going over the gold then before we go to the legs there's this little part hanging out down here which is supposed to be like the bottom of some like a tunic i guess which is this navy blue with the black cross hatching on there 
which is really interesting and this works really well because it's kind of like pinned in unlike the Joffrey figure and then her legs are just a plain beige then going over to the side you can see there's a little bit of printing on her arm which are just these two gold stripes and you can also see her sword which is called Oathkeeper and then once again this is going to be a theme with this video you can't see any printing on the back because of her brown cape next up is the master of whisperers this is Lord Varys and this is quite a basic figure like it doesn't come with any accessories doesn't have a hair mold but I think this is pulled off really well. So first off, let's start with his face, and I think this is perfect. I think you can tell exactly who this is. You can see a few creases up on his forehead, his two eyes, his mouth, and there's a little line underneath his mouth. And to me, this just looks exactly what I'd think Lord Varys would look like in a Lego figure. Then going down to his body, I'm just going to kind of group this as one. And you can see these amazingly elegant robes with a course where it ties together in the middle in this kind of like beige colour. He's also got a little crease going across to show where his belly is. And he's also got these amazing floral patterns all the way down. And the best thing about this figure is it is so unbelievably seamless from the top half to the bottom half of this figure. You honestly can't even see where it cuts off. It's of course in like this orangey kind of colour with the gold overlays. And I think this just looks amazing. Then going over to the side, this printing continues on the arm and on the sides of his robes this just looks absolutely awesome there's no printing under the arm but to be fair they did do it on the top of the arm so the underside of the arm isn't really needed then on the back sadly there's no printing at all on the back but to be fair the printing on the rest of the figure more than makes up for this the next figure is Karl Drogo another pretty good looking figure so we're going to start at the top and work our way down the hair doesn't look right from the front as you will see when I turn to the side, it does look pretty good. To be fair though, Karl Drogo's hair is pretty hard to replicate in Lego. So his hair is just slicked back in this black colour. And as you'll see when I turn to the side, it is tied back in a ponytail. So then going down to the face, this is pretty good as well. You can see some of the eye makeup around his eyes in this dark like grey colour. And you can also see his beard and he's got quite a stern look on his face. Then going down to his torso, you can see his bare chest with what I think is either like paint or tattoos. Then you can see the top half of his outfit in this brown colour with some buckles and little ties holding him together right there in the middle. This is really intricate with a few other details off to the sides in white and black. Then he's got this big gold belt in the middle with three little emblems in the middle. I can't really see what they are. Then he has this fur kind of like loincloth thing hanging down. This just looks really cool. He's then got brown legs and black tips of his shoes. Then turning to the side, there's no printing whatsoever, but you can see the back of his ponytail and his really cool kind of like long sword, like curved sword thing here, which is actually very accurate to the show. However, on the back, you can see that these black marks are back. You can also see his shoulder blades and this brown article of clothing, which covers up his midriff, is also continued onto the back with a few little black lines and a few little bits of gold there just to show the back of the belt. However, there's no printing on the back of the legs, which is a bit of a shame. So the next figure is Lord Peter Baelish, also known as Littlefinger, one of the most evil and maniacal people on the entire show. However, he is incredibly smart. So let's start off with his hair, and this is the swept across black hair mold. And this looks pretty good. I mean, I can't think of another hair mold that would have fit this figure. So I think they did a good job on picking out that one. Then going down to his face, this is also pretty good. You can see his moustache and his goatee, and his eyes, his mouth, and his eyebrows. Something about this is a little bit off for me. I don't know what it is. I feel like it's kind of just missing something on the face. However, his torso is just amazing. It's another set of robes. However, this time it's in black and this greyish silver with another floral pattern. You can also see where it comes together in the middle with these silver buckles. This is another very detailed torso. This then continues onto the legs with a lot more silver. And you can also see where it kind of like curves off around him with the black and grey floral print. You can then see the rest of his legs are just this plain grey. Then turning to the side, disappointingly, there's no printing at all on the sides of the torso or on the legs. However, you can see this gold goblet he has in his hand. However, there is some printing on the back of the torso with a little white line to show where the neckline is and this black and grey floral print once again. Then the next figure is the main character in the first series of the show. He is the most honourable man in all of Westeros. This is Eddard Stark. And this figure doesn't live up to the greatness of that character. So I'm going to go through it and tell you 
what my grievances are with this figure. So let's start off with the hair. And I think this is too light for Ned Stark. His hair is a bit darker and it's just not this style at all. Then going to his face, uh, this is okay. I mean, it's got his beard and his eyes. However, his mouth is kind of going into the beard, which you can't really see. Then going down to the torso, you can see this kind of like tunic he's got on. However, it is very basic. You can see a little bit of printing there for the neck, which is pretty good. Then you can see just the rest of it just isn't that good. You can see where it ties up in the middle and the collar. And you can also see his hand of the king badge, which I actually have in real life, which is pretty cool. However, it's not printed very well and it just looks very basic. However, he also has this belt, which looks pretty good with the buckle there and a few little dots going across which leads onto his legs with this blue and gold. The gold is very detailed, but I just don't feel like this continues onto the legs very well. The rest of his legs are then just black with no printing for the boots. Then going onto the side, there's no printing at all. However, you can see his sword. Then on the back, you can see there's a little bit of printing around the back of his belt, but this is the only figure who actually needed to have a cloak because he constantly wears a cloak in the show. Yeah, so not a great figure. And the final figure, is the former King of the North, Rob Stark. So start off with his hair. I think this is pretty good. I mean, it's not spot on, but to be honest, I don't know any other hair mold that would have fit. This is the Anakin Skywalker hair mold. It's a little bit light for my liking. I think it could have been a darker shade of brown. And going down to his face, you can see his beard and his mouth, and this beard is actually done very well. You can also see his eyes and his eyebrows. However, I would say the beard is a little bit too light because it doesn't really translate to the hair very well however the torso is excellent you can see there is a printed chest plate on this torso so let's start at the top and you can see some of his under like chain mail underneath which also holds on his cloak then in the middle you can see of course the sigil of the stark house the wolf and there's also a little dark patch on this on the one side and then a light patch on the other just to show like the middle of the chest plate then there's some black lines around this with these little white patches off to the sides, just kind of like show some dimension on this figure. Then he also has this brown part at the bottom, and going onto the legs, you can see this silver chainmail hanging down on the just plain black legs. However, I would say my biggest problem with this figure is that they didn't give him an actual chest plate. They did this for Brian of Tarth, and it would have been awesome if they printed this intricate, really awesome torso onto a chest plate piece. So going to the side now, there's no printing at all, however he has got these brown gloves and his sword. And for the final time, you can't see any printing on the back because of his cloak. So guys, here are the figures at the end, and as I always do in these videos, I'm going to say which is my favourite and which is my least favourite. I'd probably say my favourite figure is Lord Varys. It's quite simple, but it's effective. And then I'd probably say my least favourite figure is Ned Stark, just because I don't really think it looks a lot like him. But to be fair, it's really hard to pick the best and worst out of these figures because they're all pretty good. So guys, as I said at the start of the video, I did do another Game of Thrones Lego video. So go and check that out right now on my channel. And this is actually the 20th video I've done on these custom Lego minifigures. So there's surely going to be one that you guys will enjoy. I'll leave a link to the playlist down below in the description. So go and check them out. So guys, I've been Luke from Retro Revival. Like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you all later. Bye.